Welcome to Chemical Process Safety. This video is about the accident process and implementing safeguards. Most accidents follow a similar pattern consisting of a three-step sequence. The first step is an initiating event. Examples include failure of devices, such as a temperature measurement probe, a system failure, such as a control valve actuated by a feedback loop, an external event, such as a hurricane, lightning strike, or factor outside the chemical plant, or improper human inaction, such as the operator forgetting a step in a standard operating procedure. In the presence of enabling conditions, an initiation event can develop and become an incident. That incident, in turn, leads to consequences, the severity of which depend on conditional modifiers, like wind speed or how many people are present. Thinking about accidents in the context of this pattern can give us some insight about how to prevent future accidents. One strategy might be to implement safeguards in the form of design features, equipment, procedures, or software. There are two types of safeguards. A preventative safeguard stops the propagation of an initiating event into an incident. Examples include process control systems, alarms, interlocks, emergency shutoffs, or emergency cooling systems. A mitigative safeguard reduces the consequences of an incident after it has already occurred. Examples here include fire sprinklers, chemical detection devices, evacuation plans, and blast-resistant control rooms. Although a car is far from a chemical process, it's something that we use nearly every day, and it has plenty of safeguards, which might be interesting to think about as examples. Preventative safeguards include backup cameras, lane keep assist systems, automatic braking, low fuel alarms, and low tire pressure alarms. In other words, stuff that keeps the driver's attention on the road or lets the driver know if something isn't working like it should. For mitigative safeguards, we have airbags, seat belts, and bumpers. In other words, stuff that decreases the likelihood of a severe injury in the case of a crash. Surely I missed a few, and if I did, let me know in the comments down below. As you might imagine, barely any safeguard is 100% effective or guaranteed to work 100% of the time or in 100% of situations. Therefore, multiple different types of safeguards are usually desirable. Process safety engineers like to conceptualize this by envisioning slices of Swiss cheese, as strange as that sounds. Here, each slice of Swiss represents a different safeguard, and the holes of the slice represent the defects or flaws of that safeguard. Imagine that a hazard must pass through the holes of the Swiss cheese in order to become an incident. With only one or two safeguards, chances are somewhat high that the holes will align, leaving open the possibility of catastrophe. However, if you stack many slices of Swiss, the likelihood of an incident becomes much lower. It's uh, not a perfect analogy, but it's really making me crave a Reuben sandwich, so I'm going to go make myself one. See you all next video.